Hey guys, what's going on? Dace here, and today I've got something super special for you all, and that is going to be a boss guide specifically for the battleship, because long story short, I know when I first got into Sterden, um, other than the one I played as a kid, like a uh, shmup I mean, um, this was kind of my first shmup in who knows how many years, like 15, 20 years or something crazy like that. So for me, this game was definitely a challenge because I, I had no experience with shmups. So it's not like I was going from one shmup to stared in. This was a totally new experience. And the fact that it was uh, like just this one functions with like the whole randomized factor. So needless to say, when I got to the battleship, uh, for those who don't know, like that is the second last boss in the run. And he can really, really trip you up. I know that so many people, myself included, ha uh, like they get there and then they don't pass that boss until weeks and weeks later, or whatever the case is. Anyway, that was my experience. I know some of my friends have had similar struggles where it's like they just, it took so long to get past this boss. So I was talking to some peeps and um, some of them had questions and stuff like that. And I was like thinking, you know what? I'm going to just record a tutorial video, a sort of a guide um, where I showcase each ship fighting the battleship. So the thing that I'm doing, these are not going to be, the, the footage I'm using is not going to be from actual runs. I'm just going into the arena where you can select the boss you want to fight, the ship you want to use, and your weapons. Now, for the most part, other than the specialist, I have not selected a secondary weapon. I'm just using the base weapon. So as far as I know, um, unless it's mentioned somewhere and I just have not noticed it, um, when you go into this, you don't have any power-ups, you don't have any like additional health, no like reduced damage, nothing. Okay, so some of these will be sloppy, like I will take some hits. Some of these are sloppy, but bear in mind that like it's like you're starting the game at the battleship. You, you've not picked anything up, so you are very weak. And But I wanted to do this to showcase that like, yeah, just using the starting weapon... Um, you can pull off these uh, fights. So, um, yeah, the reason I chose a secondary for the specialist... Well, actually, I can get into that uh, when we get there. So anyway, without further ado, let's just get into the first ship, which is Tempest. So this is the game, uh, the one you start off with. So this is his first attack, and it may seem crazy, but all you do is just watch for how they kind of like join or like cross over each other because that creates the biggest gaps and you can literally just move up or down and avoid all these all these uh, attacks and just kind of use the space to your advantage. Now he shifts into this. So this again is just like as long as you're paying attention to the timing you won't really have an issue with this even though at first glance and when you're doing this for the first time it can seem crazy. Uh, because he's just sniping at you, but um, it's not actually difficult once you know what you're doing. Now, that was a hit that you never need to take. Now, the thing you want to do here is just, I'm not exactly sure, but the one that just went over my head, um, that's kind of, after it rotates to a certain degree, that's the only one that I'm looking at. And if you're focusing on that, then you are pretty much guaranteed to never be hit by that attack. So anyway, for this one, this is just pretty straightforward. The strands all go together, and then you have the pink ones as well. So it's just a matter of mm, just going in between. Like, it's, it seems crazy, but it's not as crazy as it is. It's one thing to be able to beat the boss like when you're souped up without like studying or observing but once you start to actually observe then it's like oh that makes so much more sense and you just have a greater sense of confidence um so anyway for this one you can kind of direct where the pink ones are going to go by where you position yourself and then you can just go back and forth i see some people sometimes they stay all in front at all times but to me that just seems like a little like, it's just an unnecessary risk. And when you have a lot riding during any given run, you may or may not want to uh, risk things unnecessarily. So 
sometimes I will still take a hit crossing back and forth, but at the same time, being on this side when he's like opposite just gives you enough breathing room and then you can cross back and then continue attacking and it's pretty much a surefire way of beating him with Tempest. So I'm trusting that, that one has helped those of you who are using the Tempest chip. So anyway, next we got Fortress, slower moving. He has the fire thing and he has the built-in rockets like that. So that's something you're going to want to be paying attention for. Uh, and again, the same thing. I'm just, I'm literally doing the exact same method for these first few phases or whatever. Um, the only one that really plays differently is the, the specialist. And I, like I said, I'll get into that when we're there. But always make sure that when those rockets are ready, you fire them off immediately because they are just too valuable to not remember to use. It could be the difference between like one, two, three different rocket attacks that you could have fired off and all the damage that would have come with it. Again, those, those hits I just took, totally avoidable. Um, that is like, this stuff so far is just the easiest. Um, but yeah, that one that right, went right over the head there, like I said, you're just watching for that. It's a very, very simple attack to deal with. So yeah, same thing here. Not really a big, a big deal. Kind of just make sure you're just looking at the overall picture and not, not focusing so much on your ship. Because you want to be kind of like just taking everything in at the same time. I remember when I first... Oh, and even like long after I was like more and more experienced with Sterid. And like it actually it's amazing because it wasn't until uh, I think a few days ago that I had a turning point with the, the battleship. Um, but all this time it was always like no matter how skilled and experienced I was with Sterid. Battleship was always like... Oh man, like it, it in my mind it felt like a 50-50 fight going in. Um whereas now I kind of noticed something and it was just a switch. It was like, "Oh wow, so if I just start doing this more and in terms of my mind, I now feel like it's 100% all the time." So, I still lose when I get to like my third cycle battleship, but the fact that there's just way more confidence, know-how and consistency with wins against him is just great so again for the fury same deal you're just going back and forth or up and down i mean um, depending on where the position of these things are you may just like kind of hook yourself up and into a uh, an open pocket of space like that or whatever but same drill as before and just going in between these so one thing to keep in mind um and same same exact thing for this phase too. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is like you will be stronger when you're actually going up against him in a run. You'll have maybe more health. You'll have the passive shield maybe. You'll be doing way more damage if you've been increasing your damage. So the fight will not last as long. The phases will go quicker um, for his attacks. Um, so please bear that in mind. If, if you're seeing that these are like taking a certain amount of time and you're like oh like how am i going to pull it off well you're going to be stronger when you face him because this is just the arena but one thing i do want to say is be sure to make use of the arena it's a very valuable resource in terms of practice um and all it takes is dedication and just getting the confidence and the know-how and you will start to breeze through this boss i guarantee it and of course, I'm not even using the teleport ability that this ship has, but you can use that too if you want. But it's not necessary. But yeah, pretty much the same thing as before. Um, it's, it's amazing how it's always just about knowing what to do and how to do it. And keeping your cool the moment you're scrambling and struggling and you're just not sure what to do like you're decreasing your chances of survival by an insane degree so just yeah being able to build up uh, a little skill or know-how is just so so it just makes a huge difference so as for the specialist this is one 
That is really interesting because you are not the one that's shooting. Your bots are. So in ways, this ship is... Well, it's interesting because it's very strong against Battleship in terms of how fast he can take it out. But at the same time, it's the weakest ship because you have to keep your bots on the go. Like, So one thing that's different when you play with a specialist against Battleship is you've got to make sure that you're positioning your bots where they're not going to be like sniped. Like here, for instance, you don't want to put them somewhere and then stay behind your bots because the snipe is just going to blast all the way through them. So you want to position them carefully and then move away so that the pink comes after you and not your bots because you're behind your bots sort of deal. So, um, and there are some other attacks. Uh, the next one after this is one that just obliterates bots and that's usually the trickiest. This phase right here, when I'm on my like third cycle um, battleship fight, this is usually like the one that I really start having issues with because he pumps out shields and then you've got to take your shield, well your bots have to take your shields out or his shields out first and then you can start doing damage. But when he keeps pumping those out and your bots keep dying because there's stuff all over the place then it can be it can be tricky so um but as you can see pretty much the same method just like back and forth make use of wide open spaces and just always attempt to put bots where they're not going to die as quickly you always want to just keep spewing them out and um yeah just like put them where they're going to live the longest essentially so here's red baron now he will only, he starts the game with three different weapons and you cannot get other weapons for him he's limited to these three so you have the laser you have bombs which i don't use in this fight and then you have like the spread shot so you have reduced speed when you're using the beam but for this part of the the fight it's the easiest thing to just weave like you do with the other ships but you constantly have this huge beam on him, and same for this phase too. It's pretty straightforward. Like in terms of like movements and stuff, you're pretty much doing the same thing regardless of which ship. It's just that, yeah, when you have different weapons, like yeah, like it depends what what you're gonna pick up and what you're gonna use. But for the most part, this is the basic idea as to how to avoid the attacks, how to move about, and uh, just not be in that state of like dread. Because I remember it was always a dread. Like, just when I would get there, when I would get to the level that he, this guy's in, it's like, okay, I've got to like play so well now because like if I take hits on the way to him, then I'm screwed or like whatever the case is. But um, yeah, when you just, do it more and more and then it just becomes second nature and it's a great feeling because then you know that you're gonna do better you can just gauge things a little more wisely you can take risks and maybe not pick up that extra health and go for a score boost instead and just like get a higher score like whatever you want to do um and that's a really cool thing this game is so so good Now, interestingly enough, I have done battleship fights where I have gone into the fight with, like, one hit left on myself, and I've come out. So that says that, like, you can definitely do better than I am. Um, like, I, I really didn't want to hassle too, too much. I kind of just want to bang this project out um, instead of doing, like, perfect examples where I don't take any hits or whatever the case is. But... I was just like, you know what, I just want to like bang these out and uh, get the idea across. But uh, I have done battleship fights without taking a hit before, and it's not as hard as it may sound. But again, you've just got to put the time into the game. You've got to just run after run. It's interesting because I haven't actually used the arena. I maybe used it like once or twice just for like popping in, seeing what it was like. But it wasn't until today that I actually was like, oh, wow, like, yeah, this is so useful for just being able to do a concentration of a single boss and just observe that much more because it isn't just a single run. You're just going at it again and again. You're extracting more and more from the experience and building that into 
just your whatever strategy or whatever it is you're doing. So um, yeah, I'm trusting this has been helpful for you guys. Uh, this is one of my all-time favorite shmups. I'm so, so thankful that I stumbled upon this game back in 2018. And to this day, it is just phenomenal. Like, oh, I cannot say enough good about this game. And it's been a long time since I've done an actual video on, um, like, stared in info. Like, I did the, the All Secret Bosses Guide video way, way back. And uh, so, yeah, when this idea popped into my mind as, like, a, a way to just help people uh, get a better understanding of a battleship and how to approach that fight, I was like, yeah, this is really exciting. So, anyway... Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I really appreciate all the support. And you guys have a stellar day playing Steridon, and we'll see you next time.